Right. Uh, great conversation here. My next guests are a pair of authors, a professor, and a digital influencer, both on a mission to empower their communities and make meaningful change. They're both going to be on a panel of content creators this weekend at the LA Times Festival of Books. Of course, it'll be a virtual one talking about ways to use digital media for social good. Let's meet them. Are you ready? Jackson Bird's TED Talk, How to Listen, uh, How to Talk and Listen to Transgender People, has been viewed over a million times. And he's got a book. His debut memoir is called Sorted, Growing Up, Coming Out, and Finding My Place. Welcome, Jack. It's so great to meet you. Alyssa Richard. PhD, Associate Professor, Journalism at the Annenberg School of USC, and author of Bearing Witness While Black, African American Smartphones, and the new protest hashtag journalism. Alyssa, what a delight to have you here. This is such a great team that I've got with me today, and I'm thrilled to be able to talk, first of all, about the Festival of Books, which we'll do on the back end, and, and both of your involvement. But we thought we'd have a conversation about the fact the two of you each in your own ways are are looking at the idea of using platforms like social media like the selfie right to stake your claim in the world to plant a flag in the world to represent your story and jackson for you 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 use the selfie you use the camera you use social media to document your voyage uh your transgender voyage yeah. Uh, well, first, thank you for having me. Also, Absolutely. I like that term, the voyage. It makes me feel kind of like a, a Viking. Like you a are. You're a Viking, Viking honey. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, no, yeah. I mean, I, I started putting videos on YouTube uh, long before I transitioned, before I came out publicly as a man and began my transition. So in a way, I felt like, you know, if I wanted to keep making these public videos, I sort of had to share my story because mm -hmm. when you were a trans person who medically transitions, like, people are going to notice, um, you know, you change how you look a little bit. Um, but mostly I, I continued sharing my story because I remembered what it was like not having any representation yeah. of trans men in the yeah. media when I was growing up. Uh, there just, there weren't any at all. You know, trans people have existed throughout time and across cultures, but mostly we've been written out of history books. And, and when our stories have been told, they've often been told by people who are not trans. And so, you know, I really can't underscore how significant and how game-changing social media has been for trans people to be able to tell our stories on our own terms Absolutely. and to find each other, find support, and find resources. And Alyssa, I, I know for you and I as black women, being uh, able to have agency over our own narrative, right? I mean, these are fancy words to talk about having a voice to express your own, um, your own experience. You, you know, you, you have been writing about the idea of putting phones in the hands of everyday people that have the ability to let them record what they're seeing in the world around them as it's happening in real time, the citizen journalist. Absolutely, Michaela, and that's one of my favorite things to really push out into the world, and that's what this book does, is really celebrate 15 activists who offered this snapshot of history before Black Lives Matter became a real rallying cry internationally to share what they saw in their communities, and they used their cell phones to do so. And in the book, I really argue that these are the most important filmmakers of this century. And as we've seen last year with Darnella Frazier, a 17-year-old girl who had the foresight and courage to pick up her phone and record George Floyd's last moments, we wouldn't have had the uprising we had last year globally without her footage. And so these people were putting their bodies in harm's way to really shed light on police brutality and living while black, quite for, frankly, mm. are the real heroes. And so I think that, you know, highlighting what they're doing with their phones needed to be put on a historical continuum in the way that Frederick Douglass was using slave narratives and newspapers and the way that the late John Lewis used 15 minutes of fame, 15 minutes of evening television. These new uh, vanguard of leaders are using cell phones. Right. You look, you make the connection from the slave narratives of so long ago all the way up now until the black witnesses that we see on the streets, uh, seeing incidents of police brutality against African American men and women. You know, it's really interesting. As I listen to both of you, it, it strikes me as 
so fascinating, right? When we think about the fact that social media for our communities, right, our, our communities, the people on this screen, have generally been a hateful place, right? You think about how social media has treated women and treated people of color and treated gay and transgender and lesbian people and non-binary people. It has not been a safe place. So it's interesting to see, Jack, how carving out your own space, saying, no, I'm going to take this as my place to control that has, has, has led to such empowerment. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that there's a lot of harassment that goes on online, you know, with, with outside of the community and inside of the community, um, you know, being a part of a marginalized population, you're absolutely going to get hate, you're going to be targeted and all kinds of things like that. But it's also exactly that. It is a space where we can actually carve out our own space. We haven't been able to do that before. And in doing that, it has led us to be able to now carve out our own space in larger spheres and more traditional media in other places that previously weren't as accessible to us. So it's also worked as a little bit of a stepping stone sure. in addition to being a space that we can have on our own in and of itself. Well, and Alyssa, something that I know Jack has been quite candid about, in fact, his whole TED Talk has been about how to talk and listen to a transgender person, is about the education aspect. By living in these bodies, there we feel a sense of responsibility uh, to educate others. People turn to us for answers. That education aspect is exhausting. We've heard this post-George Floyd, how exhausting it was, where many people are just like, go read a book, go inform yourself. You can't have me being the one that's in charge of teaching you. By giving the control of sharing what I want to share, is a way of doing it without feeling that pressure on your soul, I suppose. Absolutely. One of the things that I talked about when this book first launched was how re-traumatizing it can be to look at a lot of these images over and over on television. And I urged a lot of networks to be careful about the casual looping, almost with the air of a sports highlight, these kind of black deaths. And I said, black people are the only ones who have to watch themselves die in primetime television every single day. And so I think a lot of the footage has come a long way. Okay. Unfortunately, we're still seeing videos videos. We're still seeing police brutality happen. But in the instance just yesterday with Dante Wright, I was happy to see the video stop before the yes. tragic moments, his yes. last okay. moments. And although we can never bring him back, we can do a much better job of humanizing these victims. And that's what uh, a lot of citizen journalists are pushing for. Right. You, you both are such incredible represent, representatives of your communities. But Jack, I, I want to talk about as an individual, too, for the kids that you know. I mean, the, one of the reasons you're living out loud is, I, I think, you know, it, it's, it's a voyage. We talk about your Viking voyage, right, to give, give yourself that, that voice. But also you understand that others are seeing this. You understand there are other trans kids watching and learning. And maybe they're not in a place where they can speak out loud. You can give them voice. Um, how much has social media meant to those young people? Oh, it's absolutely crucial. I mean, especially with what we're seeing in recent months, the countless bills in, in state legislatures around the country that are targeting trans youth. Uh, in my home state of Texas right now, they're trying to remove trans kids from their parents if their parents affirm their gender. I mean, it is horrifying stuff that we're seeing out there. And I can only begin to imagine how terrified these kids are. And at least they can turn to social media and they can see other people like them. They can see adults like myself and know that they can have a future and they can be fulfilled and they can be happy and they have resources out there that they can turn to and other people online and that they can turn to for support when they are feeling completely lost either internally or because of these external factors that are just piling on. You know, I sometimes think about, uh, you know, we talk a lot about the isolation that, that sitting behind a computer screen or a Zoom screen can provide, but at the same time, at times like this, I think about the Festival of Books and the fact that you're going to be able to participate still in an odd year. You can still go and have these really rich, deep, important, timely conversations. And the people at home who need them, right, who may not be brave enough to go and attend a session, Jax, I think specifically to what you're saying, they can do it in the privacy of their own home to build up that courage, to build up that muscle, to get ready to be able to live out loud, which is our hope for all of them. Hey, I want to thank the two of you, um, uh, Alyssa and Jackson. Your panel is Saturday 
at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. 2 p.m. There it is on the screen. And here's how you can register. Events.latimes.com slash Festival of Books. We're so glad, by the way, Festival of Books, that you're doing your thing. It's so important. We need to get people reading. We need to have this engaging conversation. Check out the panels because there's a ton of them. But we thought Jackson and Alyssa would make a great conversation for our 9 a.m. show. And it didn't disappoint. Thank you both. Thank you, Michaela. Okay.